Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Ladies and gentlemen, Zometheus Rising is back in the building. The Zo What Morning Show, TRadioV.com. What is this thing? It's a social experiment. It's TV. It's radio. It's radio in TV. I don't, it's a hybrid. It's a new form. It's a new platform, right? We're getting all of this information out to the people. I, I, I dare you to go out and try to find somebody that does it like we do it. We're by ourselves. We're really lonely in our greatness. T Radio V Zo Up Morning Show back in the building. 855 878 4652 is the number to dial. You got to follow me on Twitter at Zoe Williams. Today's topic is bananas. I can't tell you how ridiculous this show is going to be. You know, ridiculous is better than ridiculous. You just take the dick out and replace it with cock. Because it's going down today. It's going to be bananas. Before, but you know how we do. Before I get into the topic, before I get into all of this other stuff, community empowerment. Yo, books. Listen, I need you to go to my website. I am Zoe williams.com i am zoe williams.com and get a copy of my book the rebirth of seeds just go there click and get it there's the cover uh it's a little fuzzy yeah thanks internet uh, internet is just terrible jesus christ alive it looks better than that in person i'll sign it for you please go to my website i am zoe williams.com and purchase a copy of it i appreciate everyone who has already done it i've sent out some books last week i appreciate all the support and i ask you to continue to support Dr. Mark Goulston has returned to the building. He's in the building. Go get his book. Just listen. He's the worst listener in the world, but this book is incredible. I can't tell you how dope this book is. Please go support Dr. Goulston and all his, I mean, he has a, a bunch of books that are really, really, really helpful. Dr. Mark Goulston has returned. Please participate in his movement. Mark Goulston's Just Listen. Great book. Great work. Also, you, you guys missed out this weekend. For all of the people that I've been promoting the Black Mastery movement, me and the founder of Black Mastery, Veronica Conway, listen, we did a boot camp phone call. It was like a conference call and a bunch of people who already purchased it, bought it. How to become an entrepreneur after spending so much time being a wantapreneur. We're gonna do this call again. Please RSVP at Veronica at VeronicaConway.com. Veronica at VeronicaConway.com. You got to support us, man. And when I tell you a lot of business people, people who are entrepreneurs, trying to be entrepreneurs, changed their thought process. She drilled down and cleaned up a lot of crap in their lives. She coaches, I host. It's crazy. It's bananas. We're going to set up another one. But the only way to participate is if you've already gotten BlackMastery.com. And if you haven't, take your ass to BlackMastery.com and download it because it's inc it's incredible, man. I'm, when I tell you, she talked about how most people unconsciously write fear into their business plan. Right? T thus turning the business plan into a business muddle. It's not a model anymore, a business model. It's now a business muddle. Oh, it was incredible, man. She blew a lot of people's doors off and helped a lot of people. Blackmastery.com, go order it right now. And when you do, get ready to receive information about another eight-week boot camp that we have planned. Crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Next business. Arise Hospitality. Arise Hospitality. Not Aspire. 
Arise. AriseHospitality.com. Arise. Hospit Arise. Lift yourself. AriseHospitality.com. It is the Black Staples Center, the Black Office Max. Why do we call them these things? Because it's black owned. And they, hey, listen, they have the same distributors. They have the same manufacturers as Staples, as Office Max. I got to keep promoting businesses, man. If we don't exchange money with ourselves, we're going to stay broke. We're going to stay dependent. We're going to stay broken people. AriseHospitality.com. Anything you can get from Staples, anything you can get from Office Max, you can get it from these people here. I'm telling you, they got big clients and big companies all over the country. It's a growing company. You should support them. AriseHospitality.com. Next one, HipLoose.com. Why do I say HipLoose.com? Because these guys are high-end tailors. They take over 30 measurements to make sure that suit doesn't fit anybody but you. It is awesome stuff, high-end quality stuff, materials, fabrics, the whole nine yards. They're incredible, man. You got to support them. Also, Ramo Mart. Ramomart.com. Man, when I tell you, this brother, every time he calls me, he's sending me new concept, new clothes, new ideas. His stuff is incredible. He's got jeans. He's got belts. He's got shoes. He's got suits. I mean, high-end stuff, man. The best quality, tailored, cut, and stitched in New York. You got to support Ramomart.com. Also, Dockrin. Dot com, D O C R E N dot com. Why is this important? I've been saying the brother was a graduate of FAMU. I've said it incorrectly. This brother is a graduate of Florida State, right? He graduated from Florida State, and what he does is prepare these kids for school. He's he he's in cahoots. Look at that. He's in cahoots with uh, all of the professors of the classes. If you need notes and and uh, and study guides for each class, you can go on to Dockrin dot com and purchase that, right? I mean, hey, if you don't have to work harder, but you can work smarter, there's a resource that you can use. Also, pharonicdesigns.com. Another Egyptian style t-shirt clothing brother who's doing a lot out of New York, pharonicdesigns.com. Go there, support the brother, pharonicdesigns.com. He has a lot of high-end stuff that I like, t-shirts and, you know, it's beautiful stuff. Go support them. I got to keep supporting these businesses. One other business, Taylor Insurance and Finance. This brother was just in here. His name is Isilfi Taylor. And not only is this dude a master of managing your money, this dude is also a master at giving back to the community. We're going to bring him in, and he's going to talk specifically about just his charity work. I mean, this dude does a lot of stuff for the community. His website is Taylor Ends. Finn.com. Now that's weird. Taylor ends, I N S, Finn.com. Ends is for insurance, Finn is for finance. Taylor ends, Finn.com. Yo, that's a mouthful. Let, we've got it all out the way now. And now that we've gotten it out the way, today's topic is going to be bananas. It's going to be crazy when I bring all of these people in here when we get busy. But right now, I got to take a quick break. But when I come back, it's going to be crazy. I'll see y'all in 2.2. So what? Back in the building. Oh! Take your phone one step. Stay connected. Make one black army organized. Dedicated to the rehabilitation and the prosperity of my nation. Ready, butter for your table. I'm not that kind of guy. This is Quick Fix Radio. Quick Fix Radio. Yeah, 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 yeah. Check it out, y'all. We back in the building. What's yes, going on? sir. What it do? We got some super guests, super special guests up in the place, in man. In the building, we got all five live in the building. Bone Thugs in the building. All everybody. five yeah, we live here, in the we house up in here. tonight, y'all. What's really going right. on? Hey, What's man, I had, I had to come see what this TV radio one, y'all, what this all about. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> hey. We got game on the line. Game, what's going down, baby? What up? What up, Gary? What's Double. going on? Oh, man, we got EPO. Double 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 Double. Who's this on the phone with us? Yo, what up, man? It's Akon. Oh, Akon. 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 Who is this on the line? It's Be Real. We got oh. Be Real. Oh. Be Real. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, this is Ty Dolla Sign right here. What up, Ty? Ty Dolla Sign in the building. Man, thanks to all the fans for stopping by. The Quick Fix with Crazy Ball, right here on T Radio V. Hi, I'm Christina Fulton, and I want you to check out my new show, Playing It Forward with Christina Fulton. Join biggest and the brightest celebrities, philanthropists, and CEOs in the world, including a five-year-old girl that is changing the world today. Five years old. What was I doing at five? It's all about having fun, kick-ass music, and making a difference. Every Friday at 1 p.m. with me, Kyle, and my DJ, Chris Cruz. Be a game changer. Play it forward. Right here at T Radio V. Radio and TV. He's the most interesting man in the world. No, really, he is. I don't always drink beer, but when I do, it's always with hot chicks. Langdon Nation, saving the world one dirty joke at a time. Saturdays from 1 to 3, exclusively on T Radio V. Hi, this is Danny Woodburn, and you're watching T Radio V. Did it come up? There we go. He's good. T Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. And one of the greatest tragedies in life is getting to the end of your life and looking back and realizing it was mediocre and mm. it didn't have to be that way. The number one reason is people are unwilling to listen and care about what's important to the mm. other person. But what if you could be someone who dared to care about everybody in your life? When you're in love, smoke gets in your eyes. Uh, but when you're anxious, you talk more than you listen. I asked my wife a month ago, I said, I don't know whether to have an affair or buy a motorcycle. And she said, if you have an affair, I'll kill you. If you get the motorcycle, you'll kill yourself. Go with the bike. Here we go. Do we have the link thing? Well, uh, you, you stuttering? You just got back and you're stuttering already? I'm stuttering. Well, you know. Jesus. I, Dr. Well, G's toolbox. Well, I'm, I'm not used to so many white people in the studio. I mean, I'm getting kind of crazy. That is you know, a change. You know, Here you know, we go. You know, yeah. I, I, I feel We'll threatened. be back to normal next week. Uh, well, yeah. Whitey Locks, uh, you know, I'm owns, like, owns I'm that. I'm like a black man. Yeah, you. I'm like a black man. I've seen that. I, uh, yeah. yeah. I've seen. I'm that. ashamed to say. We got to go radio savvy. We have uh, you, uh, for the dirty words. Uh, let yeah, let it fly. Oh, yeah, you. Go ahead. I usually always radio it. savvy. Yeah. Either way, you know, it is you. Doctor G, what are your uh, tips before we set up the topic? What are they? Uh, well, well, first of all, on uh, Wednesday, uh, five twenty-one at oh, there it is at uh, eleven a.m. I just broke the record at this thing for we have seventy-eight hundred people registered for this free webinar, which wow. is about t uh, tips for getting through to people from a hostage negotiation trainer, which I used to do. Yeah. And so I uh, hope people will attend. They can find that if they go to uh, Citrix.com. They do go to meeting, go to whatever. And so we'd love to have you there. But the, uh, but the tip, wh wh I want to take on today's topic, and, and you're going to throw me under the bus, but i got to get this out. I think, uh, I, I think tenderness in the world has become extinct. Tenderness is reserved for dying parents, dying uh, grandparents that you have a relationship with. Maybe you're sick animals. Maybe you're kids when they're cute. But other than that, everything else is uh, project management. Everything's let's do a deal. And so part of what I talk, I'm going to talk about in the webinar is, is how to just listen. And, and just here is kind of a, a tip. There's four levels of listening. You can talk over people. You can talk at people. You can talk to people. And you can talk with them. And, and the way you know you're talking is kind of their body language. When you talk over people, when someone's talking over you, you're insulted. When you're talking at people, they feel they stick their chin out you. You can't talk to me that way. When they talk to you, they say, yeah, this is interesting. But when you talk with people, like when you talk to that aging parent, <laughs> when you talk to that dog who's on their last legs, uh, mm. it's what happens is the other person just relaxes. It's like you're putting your arm around them and say, we're going to get through this. <laughs> Whatever it is, oh, there you go. Anyway, but those are the four tips. Hope you join the... Uh, 
webinar, and I'll throw me under the bus because I think that was just too sweet for this. No, show. one big advantage of him is that he has a soothing voice. Yes, that that probably works well with your career. <laughs> you know, you're, you're a very soothing voice. People would want to listen to you. My voice ain't really? I, shit. I, I, Nobody wants well, to hear it. You're a comedian. It's a different kind of thing. And no, man. I'm <laughs> telling you, even when I'm not funny, you don't want to hear tender <laughs> shit from me. Uh, did anybody else hear Where's the Tenderness playing in their hand? What? Where no, we didn't hear that, uh, Jeff. Uh, Jeff. No, uh, no. Uh, <laughs> so let me say this. The doc set us up perfectly because this, the topic for today is one of the most difficult ones to talk about, apparently, prolegedly. It seems like it's very difficult to talk about sexuality, our fantasies, right? What if you're really fantasizing about smacking your sister's ass while you're hitting your wife? Right? I had that one the yeah. other day. No, no. It's wow. a lot of weird fantasies going on. I am learning on. a lot. I'm just saying. A lot of people don't want to talk about how they really I'm, feel I'm gonna about add sex, that, right? I'm going to add that to the bucket list before I die. Don't do that. Um, okay. Because well, that's, that's only a couple of weeks wow, away. No. You might want to put something <laughs> worthy on the bucket list. <laughs> <laughs> All right? Yeah, yeah, there, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Today's topic, though. Fantasies and fetishes. A penetrating look into the good, the rough, the bad, the violent, and the ugly of sex. Now, I'll take that one. <laughs> I yeah. bet you will. Wow. Ladies and gentlemen, I, 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 oh. if you didn't know who's in the building right the now, man. the man, the myth, the, the largest man. star in porndom history, they biggest look, star oh in porndom God. history, the legendary old wizard of Pokenum, ladies and gentlemen, Ron Jeremy joins the Zoe. All right, all right, all right, all right. Yes, 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 yes. That intro deserves this. Thank you very much. It's oh, great to be man. here. What the hell? <laughs> GD I, Wonder. I can't, I, can't, I can't carry a drum in my pocket, like a rim shot. Man. So a harmonica fits in the pocket, so I could do that. You know? I got oh, questions. Wow. I got questions, ladies. I got questions. You have a guest I don't have too. a bucket list, by the way. You I think I already did it. I don't Come think I have on, a, dude. I don't think I have a bucket list less, left. You know, I think I. Wow. It's done. It ended years ago. Jesus. <laughs> wow. You, ha you brought a guest with you from... From across the water. Yes. Indeed. Hello. <laughs> she's from Hogwarts, but she's one of the freakier witches. Uh, tell us we'll your do name. something special with this broom. <laughs> right. <laughs> she's got a great Cockney accent. Yes. You know, from Brighton, London. Really? Tell us who you are and how you're going to weigh in on today's topic, sexual fantasies and fetishes. Well, um, I'm Bettina. Bettina. And, and funny enough, I've got my 30th birthday coming up, and I've been having these kinky fantasies for the dirty 30. Oh, okay, well, go ahead and share. Share, share with us. Your Look how she says that word. Say that. What's that word I like when you say? <laughs> the dirty 30. Ooh. What's the word that... Uh, that, that Naughty. No one says it like that. Naughty. Say it again right next to the mic. Do it, say it one time. Naughty. Ooh. <laughs> Is that like Nick Nolte? Excuse me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I love I'm how she going, says that. That's all. I'm going to the bathroom. I Say Nick Nolte. Privacy. Naughty. My fancy. My fancy is very <laughs> no. naughty. Oh God. <laughs> so I have questions. You know how we do with the show. It's funny. It's intellectual. It's deep. It's probing. We have to do that. Is religious morality at fault for the huge numbers of sexually repressed men and women in the world? I don't know, but I'm sure. We're going to dig deeper into it today, right? Regarding a great sex life, is a certain level of violence good and healthy for one? <laughs> Look at Jeff. You can't contain himself, right? How does one expect uh, or express their true erotic nature without fear? A lot of people are very afraid to just really let go. Right? One of my favorite philosophers, Krishnamurti, says the only time we've ever been really true is when, we've, when we're in the moment of, you know, busting off, getting an orgasm. Really? Other than that, we're this manicured projection of who we think we are as opposed to who we really are. And only when we're busting off are we really that person. Making the donkey face. Why is it so <laughs> difficult? <laughs> really? <laughs> really, Jeff? That's what happened. Do the I'm donkey sorry. again. <laughs> I'm just saying, why is sex so difficult to talk about? Why is it so difficult? Like, for instance, if you had a fetish doc, not necessarily a fetish, or say a desire. To it's be not with, a matter of if, it's a matter of when. To be with Keisha oh, Cole. Yeah. Right? Would you, how would you break the news to your wife? Like, it's a certain kind of woman, like a, just... One of these real hood, 
ghetto fine chocolate sisters down in the I, I want to try one with you, Betty. How would you tell her that, Doc? I'd email her the YouTube and say I'm going out to Winchell's. Oh, while she watches it. I don't know. <laughs> no, but can I can I say something about what you how you teed it up because uh, this is uh, uh, this I found fascinating. I, you know, I'm a shrink. I'm a psychiatrist, and I used to moonlight in some of the state hospitals to make extra money. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that would happen, I, I remember one incident where they uh, where they actually. Uh, tied someone down because he was having sex with everyone in the day room mm. and, and, the, and the head psychiatrist said to me you know it's a shame uh, when he's having sex that's the closest that he's in touch with reality because he's so far gone mm. and we have to punish him mm. for being in touch with wanting to do something with other people we have to tie him down because it's so disruptive and disorderly and I remember this, this other shrink sort of saying you know, it, it, it's awful because it's just Otherwise, he lives in his own room, uh, his own world, and he's just kind of wandering around. And this actually was in contact with another person, but wow. because it uh, because it broke the rules, we have to. Put well, it how was the depot? Yeah. How were the recipients? Were they enjoying his sex? Were they were they glad he was doing it? <laughs> the ones he's having <laughs> sex great with. Question. Great question. Great question. Well, a lot of the women who have, was he just doing it girl guy with girl, not guy with guy or anything like that. Uh, was yeah, I, I think he, I, I think he was going about. Uh, well, I'll tell you, you know, when you're in state hospitals, all they're focused on. This was years ago. Is where can they bum a camel cigarette? Because all they do in the day room is smoke camels because they don't have filters. They smoke each other. Which is a lot sandwich. worse for you than having sex, by that's the way. True, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So yeah, did yeah. He, was he, were the people enjoying what he was doing? Was he accepting his advances? Uh, you know, some of them did. But the point is, you know, when you have a lot of paranoid schizophrenic, it wasn't, you know, I, I would say it wasn't going over that well. Right. But, uh, yeah. but, so you know, but it's sad. Go I would try to restrict them to those who really want it. And yeah. not, uh, I worked with, uh, I have a master's special ed. I used to work with disturbed kids. And it was always a very difficult thing when they started showing interest with each other. It was a way oh, yeah, out in the Catskill yeah. Mountains. Oh, yeah, yeah. And they had prescribed pills. Immediately the, the nurse gave them pills, birth control pills, because if they have a child, they lose their SSI you know, disability. Wow. So, but they didn't really discourage it. They just wanted to make sure it was consensual, happy, healthy, you know, kind yeah. of thing, you know. So Ron, do you think religion has ruined our, our ability to be sexually expressive and free and open. Depends which religion. You know, back in the Roman and Greek days, anything went. Gay went, straight went. It was wild and crazy. It was the Judeo-Christians mm -hmm. who came along with the whole guilt thing. So it wasn't mm -hmm. all religions. Sometimes the people were fine with it. Wow. I would say it's the sole ruin of, of the sexuality, but it certainly has contributed to sexual ruin. I do these debates with a pastor named Craig Gross on the road, so the Triple X Church, and we have great debates. And, and he's one friends, of your friends, right? Very, very good friends. Yeah. And the thing is, though, and one girl asked a question, which I just backed up and gave a salute and said, handle this one. A girl <laughs> says to him, um, Craig, what's done more to kill people, the Bible or sex? You know, wow. or a little, you know, the religion mm. or sex, whoa, whoa. which has kill, killed more people, porn or the Bible, you know, porn or right. religion. And I went, whoa. What did he say? Good. Wow. He, he did the Ralph Cramden. And humana, Mortis, humana, humana, humana. That's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> Was that a nice whopper? Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's that's Religion's heavy, killed more people than sexuality. That's and, and it's Easy. interesting because in the book of Revelation, it says the harlot sits on the back of the beast and the beast's secret name is pornography. So there's been this movement that porn is the problem, right? Right? Yeah. There's been this movement that sexual expression is the problem. But how can we not have a meaningful relationship without really good sex, without really good porn? Because with the advent of technology, Man. every relationship is potentially a well, porn. People, people are voyeuristic, so yeah. they can't get rid of that. The, yeah. they, they found pictures of naked people on the walls of caves back in caveman eras, you know? You know they said Thomas Jefferson had you know, depictions of porn in his, in his little closets. I mean, you know, you don't, where, do you, where do you draw the line? Mm -hmm. you know, people have a voyeuristic nature, and they're going to look for that, that that satisfies it. If it's done happy, healthy, consensual, and so be it. Yeah, you know? yeah. But Tina, do you like being choked? Yes. Speak to us about a certain level of violence no, in boy, your I relationship. Your pleasure with that right girl. Yes. I brought the right girl for this one. Yes. <laughs> a little slap and tickle, even. Go deeper. Yes, well, I recently <laughs> I've, I find um, when I am having sex, unless like a guy tries to choke me or tries to cover me breathing for a little bit, I can't come. I need to feel like... Wow. Hey, Sticky. Mm. Control. Hey, Snowflake. Hey. I can get dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> 
but do you do you do 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 say do do S and M both mm. both sides mm. the slave side and the master side? Um, I, I do. I like being the slave. Indeed. Wow. A return to the times of old. <laughs> Too easy. The Moors have That's returned so. to El <laughs> Andalus. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're um, so the Americans enslaved the British girls. Is that how it works? <laughs> Indeed. Well, I, I find if, if a guy is being naughty, he's not treating slave very nicely, then I can switch and make him my slave. He has to work his way up. Wow. Like up and up. I don't know As if I want to play the slave. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to play the Don't say slave to a black man. No, you're, that's you're right. That's whoa, 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 whoa. We're I got a different revolu- experience. I don't... So we're, listen, we're really quickly. Revolutionary war. That's exactly. We got to take a quick break. We hear the music. We'll be back at 2.2 with more sexual fantasies and desires. Ron Jeremy in the building. Holla! Unobtainable. Unobtainable standard. Welcome to Big Mama Nature's house. There's a war! Yeah. I just have debris all over him. That's Bleeding. a bad man. Badass, man. Woo. Our chairs are damp. Our chairs are wet. Our, our chairs no, are I'm slightly damp. I'm gonna have to use that People, in the seat. This is Where's... just like Apocalypse Now. So this is a good idea to light a torch near a highly flammable costume, mainly around my crotch area. We're gonna get cut out, yeah. It's just gonna be cuts of Jean-Claude. They'll like pause them with loud music over it. What are the chances of a dangerous animal in this island? Zero. So just come. Hi, this is Slim Jim Phantom and you got the big beat. We're gonna take this music into the 22nd century. We deal exclusively in rockabilly music. Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis, Carl Perkins, Chuck Berry, Little Richard, Richie Valens, Wanda Jackson, Janice Martin, the Everly Brothers, Johnny Cash, and everybody else. Thank you so much for supporting the big beat here on T Radio V. Radio We're back with Politically Naughty with Mary Kay on TRadioV.com. I don't feel like it would be as big of a deal these days if I, oh, you know. Oh, you'd be surprised. The most powerful weapon in the world is <laughs> This is a no-holds-barred conversation. So oh. anyway, everybody started drinking my bath water. I loved it. <laughs> That is amazing. <laughs> Kitten, you need a movie about your life. If Maybe. Mary Carey was governor, <laughs> you wouldn't be having these problems in America. Exactly, Just exactly. Saying. I know. Get Politically Naughty with Mary Carey, Mondays at 4 p.m. on T Radio V. Hello, T Radio V. Hello, for us. Hi, guys. My name is Steve Ranazizi. My name is Mary Elizabeth Ellis. My name is Katie Azelton. You're watching TV on the radio, but you're not watching it, you're listening to it because radio on TV. Hi, T Radio V. <laughs> Keep that radio going inside that television set. I love T Radio V. Trust her. T Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Hi, welcome to Psychology by Sandy. Today we are going to be discussing sexual fetishes. And this is a bit of a complex subject, so we are only going to be able to cover the basics. However, we are going to cover the fundamentals, and there may be a couple more videos to cover the rest. Now before we get started, I would like you to pause the video and leave a comment listing what your fetish is. And this is only if you're brave enough, if people know your username, then maybe you don't want to and you don't have to, it's okay. However, if you can just pause the video, leave your comment, and we will continue. First, we are going to go over the meaning of the word fetish. 
because people commonly actually use that word incorrectly. Now, in psychology terms, fetish actually means a sexual association with a non-living object. And here is what the American Psychiatric Association has to say in the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual for Mental Disorders. Fetishism involves the use of non-living objects, the fetish. Among the more common fetish objects are women's underpants, bras, stockings, shoes, boots, or other wearing apparel. The person with fetishism frequently masturbates while holding, rubbing, or smelling the fetish object, or may ask the sexual partner to wear the object during their sexual encounters. So yeah, you can have a sexual fetish for stockings or boots because they're non-living objects, but you wouldn't necessarily say that you have a foot fetish. Now what people commonly refer to as a foot fetish, there's actually another word for that, and we are going to go over that in just a minute. However, let's first go over the origin of the word fetish. The word fetish comes from Latin facticius, which means artificial or man-made. Now, it also means an object that has supernatural powers, or more specifically, a man-made object that has powers over others. The word was first coined by Charles Brosis in 1757 while studying religions, more specifically African and Egyptian religions. And in these religions, they had these figurines which represented gods or persons. And these figurines would represent some sort of power over the group or the tribe. Now, I'm sure you've heard of a voodoo doll. Well, a voodoo doll in this sense would be considered a fetish. Over the years, the word fetish has been bastardized to mean an oh, object that one wow. has some sort of sexual association. I try to school you every week with some science on what's happening. It all so based off us. of the definition of fetish, all you ladies out there who can't get off without the little hummingbird. <laughs> right, that's I a fetish. I can't believe you got this at the 700 Club. Hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have that in my house. <laughs> Look who joined us, ladies and gentlemen. Corey Holcomb is in the building to talk about sexual desires and fetishes and fantasies. Corey. Is a, is a fist uh, a non-living object? Because <laughs> some bitches have fetishes, fetishes with fists. You, with just, you fist. know what's so crazy? Corey wasn't here when I asked the question about violence and sex. I know you could choke a bitch into an orgasm. I've seen it done before. Yeah. <laughs> well, the, doctor, the doctor probably agreed that you have beta endorphins, and they're given out, they, they get released into the body for the adrenal cortex in terms of sexuality, in terms of pain, pleasure, oh, yeah, fear. Oh, yeah, all that stuff, absolutely. Yeah, so there are, there are similarities, even in your chemistry of your blood, when you're either scared, frightened, happy, having sex, eating chocolate, right? Oh, yeah. So there are, there are oh, yeah. some There's actual similarities. I didn't know the, I didn't know the, I didn't know how to say it like that, but yeah, what he said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he said he don't know about the adrenal cortex, but right. I done ate a snicker and I choked the bitch. I thought that was a roller coaster. <laughs> and six flags. I done choked the bitch while eating a snicker. <laughs> but don't you find that it's difficult to talk about? I'm just talking about sex in and of itself. Like, I wonder if men really have the heart to communicate to their women, you know, what they really want. What I've seen in society. The pimps seem to be the ones who are the most, you know, skillful at articulating what they want, being able, oh, to, bro, being able to turn a girl out because they're saying what it is that they want. They're putting the girl in that situation, whereas the common dude typically does what the woman wants him oh, to do. Well, so let me say this. When you pay for pussy, uh, after about the third uh, woman that you pay for, that's when you start to speak up more for what you want. <laughs> You be like, damn! I just gave this bitch eighty dollars, and I didn't get what I want. Now I'm gonna so, need you to go yeah. on and swallow. After about that fourth bitch, you gonna be like, look here, I need my ass licked, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying, yeah. when you pay for sex, you'll say what you want. Yeah. Ron, of all the ethnicities <laughs> that you've impaled, <laughs> they, they would like his behind. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which is the best? Is black pussy better than Asian pussy? Better than white pussy? Which is the wettest? Man, what are the differences? I'll tell you what's funny. What are uh, the subtleties uh, look, of the yoni? All I, all I really care about is a pulse. I'm just not that picky. If she's breathing, <laughs> I put a mirror by the nose, I see fog, 
Going right in there. However, <laughs> this funny, they're all the same. You guys know this. Each, a lot of girls have a lot of great, I love a black booty, for example. Ah. I love to have sex with a girl, doggy style, especially when she's black, has a big, beautiful ass. And I'll do like, as if that butt is round, and you want to triple legs throw down. Yeah. I'll do that. She'll start Rhyming? bouncing. She'll bounce to it. I also like white girls. I like everybody. I can't think. You know, I'll tell you what's funny. A lot of the famous actors in Hollywood love Asian girls. A lot of them. And I've asked them why. Yeah. And they said, well, they have cute feet. They're very tight in the vagina, and they have lovely nipples. And that was something I heard from a lot of actors, the famous ones. Mm -hmm. Some of the best known had that thing. Foot fetishes, because Asian girls have cute little feet, mm -hmm. nice nipples, and tight vagina. And they like that. So they run. Other than that, but they're all tight girls to you. Are girls. Right? Look, I, I fucking love I like anything. Can I, I, mean, I would never turn down a girl because of color, size. And I mean, Who was you know, the best? Who was the best you've the ever best? hit? Whoa, I love, I lo I'm a big fan of natural. So I like the top of the Stevens, Christy Canyon. Taylor Wayne, Terry Weigel, you know. Man, you going through my whole. Like, yeah, I like. I asked him, I asked you know him who to bring has skin the tightest diamond. pussy? You who? know who has the tightest pussy of all girls? Who? Them real bull dagger looking little bitches. <laughs> the, the bitches who be, they really prefer girls. Yeah. <laughs> they look like men. Yeah. Every time I fuck one of them ugly motherfuckers, I be like, this pussy is immaculate. <laughs> it's brand new. I had to take the wrap off one of them pussies. <laughs> I'm just I'm saying. Not the hate you. Right. <laughs> Guys never think to flirt with them girls. I, I throw them off when I'm seriously trying to flirt with them. They be like, is he for real? I'm like, yeah. Hell yeah. So I'm going to ask the panel, and I'm going to start with Dr. Goulston, right? Uh, <laughs> Dr. G. <laughs> what is considered an abnormal turn on, and what is your most Abnormal turn on. I hate to put you. I hate to throw you under the bus. Do I want to hit it? Abnormal turn ons, right? Let There's a fetish that's actually in videos before he goes per personal people. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it's actually cells. It's a uh, girl smoking while you have sex with them. Really? I don't know why that's a fetish, but there's a bunch of DVDs that actually sell. Girls smoking and having sex. How come mm. I, like? There's yeah, I can say there's, there's something for everyone. I mean, anything you could think of. That's a crazy, goofy, nutty fetish. What would we Someone call an unrealistic crazy. fetish or something that was dangerous or you know. snuff movies? Snuff yeah. movies. What's that? That turns people on. Go yeah, into that, Doc. If into that, I'd be afraid. Why are they enjoying something like that? Yeah. You know? Go into that, Doc. What's a snuff movie for our? Layman fans. Well, Ron will help me with this, but I. Uh, -uh hell no. Yeah, you about to reveal down, the truth yeah, about well, himself now. Really really come on, Doc. <laughs> the ones in America are fake, but the ones that are maybe made in South America or parts of Eastern Europe or whatever, that some of them are, are actually real. Really? That supposedly in white slavery markets, some fathers or mothers sold their kids for something like this, but I don't know if it really goes on anymore. Mm -hmm. I think Interpol, CIA, and the FBI have stopped it. But that was uh, a bizarre thing, you know, long, long time ago. What are they doing? They, people getting killed. It's stuff means you die. And, and it turns them on? Yeah. Well, they belong in a hospital, that's for sure, but they do, yeah. Wow, wow. So well, look at that film that won an Academy Award, Slumdog Millionaire. Oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. kids make yeah. better beggars because you get their eyes taken away from yeah, them. Or, yeah. or the girls are brought into prostitu prostitution at age 13, you know. Wow. That stuff went on in Mumbai, India, I mean, years and years and years ago. They've since have cleaned it up. But, you know, these are not just fetishes. These are ill people, you know, so you criminals. Got, what, You've what, what got stuff whole, where... What about the whole thing of things needing to escalate to turn you on? I mean, and, and, and people, uh, yeah, yeah. you know, they're, they're this level, and, and, it's, and it's never enough. And so, because I, I think what drives it all is there's, there's this need for this release, and you can't get that release unless uh, it, it's more higher and higher risk and more danger and all that stuff. So it's sex by itself. I think this is what you're saying, Doc. Sex by itself has to keep escalating or it gets boring or where it kind of gets routine. For some. Right? Well, if you're looking for, for some, right? Yeah. 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 Go into it, Corey. Well, I'm just saying, like, I, I, I get it. There's people who have crazy shit they, they're into, but I just like fucking a bitch and washing up and leaving. <laughs> I don't like well, all the spectacular <laughs> shit. I, I guess it's because I, you know, I get frustrated when girls start right. talking. Something happens when they start oh talking. Oh my god, yeah. That deals with my, that yeah. fucks with my erection. <laughs> That's why I don't like. That's when they start begging. I'm like, oh, let me. Yeah, I gotta get out of here now, shit. You know, I, I, you know, I, I once saw I once saw a couple, and I, I'm somewhat intuitive, and I said to the guy, I said, well, you know, given that your sex life is terrible, the two of you. You're either uh, you're either jerking off, you're having an affair because I don't think you're like into popular mechanics and shining your car. And what happened is he, his face got all red and he said, "Meet Judy," and uh, and he it's like he was exposed mm -hmm. and all this sort of stuff. And then and then uh, and just the shame and that kind of thing. And uh, actually, he said, "I've got a poem." 
and, the, and it was really kind of sad. He said, the poem is this, we're lonely little boys playing with our toys, trying very hard to not make any noise. You know, and that's when there's so much I think that, that was cool in the gang, wasn't it? Yeah, that was cool in the gang. If you hear yeah. any noise, it's just me and the boys. No, that's a parliament. But Ron, I don't know if you could understand this. What some of these men, some of these married men, what, what some of them have told me, they say, it's not so much the sex and the, uh, the masturbation, it's having a woman smile at me and say, do whatever you want. Yeah. Because they're, they're just not getting that at home. I mean, that's they, some good they, shit right that's there. Not, right, yeah. You have to yeah. pay yeah. for that. Yeah. You took that. <laughs> don't, don't a lot of wives do you what the husband to wants. You know, they, they get in the car, the house, the kids are happy, everyone's happy. Don't the women usually do that? Unless, uh, it's, uh, unless no. it's too crazy. Mm. Like, you know, they want to go here, yeah. like a gang bang. Or something. Yeah. I mean, swing clubs are pretty successful. There's one that has my name on it mm-hmm. in Portland, Oregon, called Ron Jeremy's Club Sesso. They license my name. And I've seen it. I'm, I've go, seen I'm going up there. Can you get me a pass? Yeah, you can go. Yeah, yeah, yeah sure you can. Yeah. And, it's, sure a, and it's the thing. And, uh, <laughs> and I've seen it really, really work. I'm sure you've seen it work, too. Or, you've seen or, what work, Ron? Uh, I've I'm seen swinging. Work. The swinging, whole yeah, thing yeah. of swinging work. Where you oh, do swinging. Things, yeah. Not necessarily they swap wives, but they might do something playful, like, honey, you could touch him while you and I are together, or I'll touch her while we're together. They get a little playful, because... I think the hardest thing in a marriage, and I think more divorces are caused because of, and I hate to say this, it sounds so bad, mm-hmm. less electric, boredom. Wow. Every yeah. girl, and every guy complains that in the beginning, the first three years of marriage, it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, baby, yeah, yeah, ride yeah. that thing. You yeah. know? And then as years go by, two, three, four years, it's like, boredom. they say, look, I love my steak and lobster at night, but not every night, and they... And boredom sets in. Yes. Well, well, right. And Masters and Johnson's but and all I these also think, and all these sexual... I think men cheat anyway. They, but I also think women... They're catching up. I think women are women catching up. Women have a thing called the boy toy. Right. That yeah. didn't exist when I was a kid. A boy toy was something that was looked against. You, know, you have to get to know the guy, like the guy, love the guy, like that paradise by the dashboard lights, some yeah. meatloaf. Just say you love me, we can have sex. Yeah. That's all it takes? Okay, I love you. Uh, right in there. But do you and agree? now, women are, have well, like a boy toy. Especially women in their 40s. Yeah. A guy oh. comes over, gives them a little servicing, and they leave. The biggest adult tapes in the market now are the MILFs and the Cougars. Yeah. Guys get turned on with that. And so do women, you know. Yeah. So th- there's a it's a whole new era. Now with girls, they want the one night stand. Right. And guys like, dude, I she want they want to date me. Well, she had fun. You gave her a good ride. Now she has homework. She's at Yale. You know, so <laughs> don't, yeah. too bad. You know, like, and it's a whole new era. Yo, what? we gotta take a quick break. And like Yale has sex week. We gotta take a quick well, break, but when we come back, we're gonna continue the conversation. Ron brought up a great point. And I do believe that women are only at the tip of the iceberg for what they really desire and what they refuse to share with their partners. Uh, yeah. We'll be back to go deeper into that. Holla! You can't blame them, no. Their design is intelligent. And I ain't talking about no heaven no. So if you blame anybody, then blame the programmers. We're just an alien ant farm or some apple. Life's granted and we can fathom. Scientists split a Hi, I'm Dina Ruggieri, co-author of Children of War, The Mike Rodriguez Story, and founder of Growth Foundation. Growth Foundation is a nonprofit here in Hollywood that provides services to at-risk youth. The vision of growth is to assist youth in developing the confidence necessary for academic achievement, self-sufficiency, and overall well-being. Not only was Mike Rodriguez a volunteer at Growth Foundation, but he also worked on Skid Row to help other addicts off the streets and in to treatment. A portion of each sale of Children of War, the Mike Rodriguez story, is dedicated to a scholarship fund in Mike's name to help youth achieve their personal and educational goals. Belief in oneself becomes possible when one is believed in. Please visit www.childrenofwarbook.com for more information. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ty Simpkins. Miss Danielle Basuti. Hi, this is Brooke Peoples. I'm Jocelyn Donahue. Hi, I'm Keegan Allen, and you're watching T Radio V. T Radio V. T Radio V, radio and TV. Is that right? Yeah. Yes. T Radio V. Yo. <laughs> T Radio V. Radio and TV. Radio and TV. Hey everybody, Sean Astin here. You may know me from Goonies, Rudy, The Lord of the Rings, but actually my calling is as a political radio show host. So I am proud to announce that I'm bringing my show, Vox Populi Radio, right here to T-Radio V, radio in TV. Thursdays, 12 to 2, live. Did I say that it's live? Live. Call in, tweet in, check in. It's gonna be your show.
Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Oh, a little bit. Yeah. Not that good. I was a ski instructor. Oh, we're good. I'll give you something. Since go marching in, you know. Look, I always tell my, my Christian friends, um, I happen to be a, a, a Jew, and I always tell my friends, we're basically the same. Our Bible stopped, and yours just kept going. That's it. It's, it's so simple. You got the old and the new, we got the old. Right? We all agree that Christ was somebody very special. We think he was a rabbi. They think he was a rabbi and a god. You know, so it, small differences. Small. <laughs> there are hypocrites in all walks of life, but I think the church has its fair share. Are there more? There are a lot of hypocrites in the church, and uh, it's very unfortunate. I think, I think the Lord above probably has a real problem with that, using his name falsely. If I was ever attracted to a woman, and we had a non-sexual relationship, it would be her fault. Is there something I said, honey? I'll lose the weight for you. Wait, watch, I'll suck it in. <laughs> it's a very important statement because obviously, you know, who can criticize when they're often making the same mistakes? We see it happen all the time. We've seen it happen with some religious leaders, too, or, or, or senators or congressmen who speak out against a certain thing, like even the guy who's now on Fox News. He was the governor of New York. How the heck is he now a commentator on, on Fox News? And he, he lost his, his office for being with a, a hooker, an escort, and he was prosecuting escorts. So that kind of thing is just crazy. It's just crazy. I think hypocrisy is, I think, one of the worst uh, crimes. I really think so. And I have been, I've witnessed it a lot being in my line of work. Love is the thing that tugs at your heart when you can't really explain it, because if you explain it, it's more like a like. You don't know what it is, what it is, how it is, where it is. When something just draws you to somebody in a very almost painful way, where being without them is torture. That's as close as I can get to the word love with a quick answer. I had some situations where it had to be either the Lord or an angel or something because it was just, it couldn't be explained, you know, through um, just coincidence. You know, I had some interesting experiences. That Kennison story is certainly one of them. The car miraculously skips all the trees and coasts to a stop. And then I say to him, and then saying, was he leaving God now, Ron? <laughs> We're upside down. <laughs> saying, you go to great lengths to prove a point. <laughs> then his brother goes, Sam wasn't the one proving the point, Ron, you know? What was I thinking? <laughs> oh, guys, I'll try again. I'll do a better one next time. I'm sorry. <laughs> These are the jokes, folks. I'm here all week. <laughs> wow. Back in the building with Ron Jeremy what Legend. Was what was that from? Uh, you, know that? you know, we just snatched it. You were the one that was there. You, yeah, you, you were there. Man, let me tell you something. When you do a lot of, of shit, you don't remember shit. <laughs> <laughs> you don't remember yeah. shit. But, uh, it's, 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 I, I agree with everything it said. You yeah, know? of course. It was <laughs> you said it was you. <laughs> yeah. You got to tell the guy Kennison. saying that. Tell hey. the Kennison story. Man. You know, what? wait, wait, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Can we stay on topic? Let's do that. All right. All right. I got a quick question. We know in the hood, there's always been this saying that the crazier the girl, the better the, the, better the yoni, oh my God. right? So we have a question here that apparently there's some research on that. They're saying uh, nymphomania, a.k.a. hypersexuality, is commonly an early sign of bipolar disease. Hmm. There's some research to support this concept. Is there a reason... But what is the reason why crazy cooter is usually the best cooter? And, oh, but also it can be the most dangerous. Oh, allow, yeah. me, allow me to warn my friends here who are all celebrities and you know, people who have money and power. When a girl's a total nutcase, she may be better in bed, but she also may turn on you the next morning. Yeah. I told her friends that I was drunk, he was too pushy. and then say, you know, When a girl's crazy, unless it's somebody you've been dating for a long time, or have a, like most rock stars have retired cops as their bodyguards, mm -hmm. so the door can be left partially open and they'll witness it. You want to stay a mile, a hundred miles away from a crazy girl. You must have someone there with you in that room. Never wow. stick or anybody, because crazy. a crazy girl could turn on you. But Whereas that's what... We, yes, they're great in bed. Yes, they're phenomenal, of course. No, no, that's that's, you know, that's but, but a catch-22. It's God's it's way of them. balancing it out, because <laughs> if you with a bitch that's crazy and a pussy that shit, you're going to kill her. <laughs> She's gonna be like, bitch, I, you been acting crazy in this pussy ain't shit. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> if a girl, if a girl is crazy, drunk, if she's drunk, if she's stoned, 
mile, you go a hundred miles away. Yeah, I don't ever want to. I never fuck with. You girls. could get in trouble the next day and lose your entire career. You never fuck with you girls this way. Drunk, crazy. Here's a my thing. Tipsy's okay. It's it's That's, my ego. I'm too arrogant. I want. I don't want none of this. Oh, I can't believe what I did. And oh no, you you want to fuck me? <laughs> I want to fuck you. <laughs> and let's go do it. The other than Doc, that, this, nah, I'm not fucking. Around. Doc, who is the craziest girl you ever had sex with? And how did you get away? And was it good Yoni? I just love asking him, and just so you can get his face. Like, right, I'm like, how am I going to negotiate my way out of this one? I've been married 36 years, and I haven't cheated. Wow. wow. Not even if you both agree. It's not cheating if you so, both agree. So what I'm saying is I can't remember that far back. You know what? I really believe him Although when he I, says no, that. No, no, no. no. So Most I. guys no, can't yeah. tell me that. No. But I believe you yeah, yeah, when you yeah, say yeah, yeah, yeah. you've only had physical sex with your wife since you got married. Yeah, but I I was at Berkeley in the 60s, so I'm sure there were some really good times then. Oh, Jesus. He can't remember, Could though. You, We've got do, another do you doctor. Do it's okay that some couples like to swing? Do you think it's something that you think is against or you're, it's wrong or... If they like it, well, or I, no, I, well, he's a Jew too. He's against it. That's not I'm, cheap. A, I'm a Jew too. too. But, uh, <laughs> we, have, we, we have juicy fruit here. Well, Dr. But, Drew's uh, against it. He thinks it's, he never sees it, that it's a good idea. He's on TV though. Yeah. No, no I, I think where it gets in trouble, a lot of people mislead themselves. So they think it's fine. And then what happens is once it's kind of done, there's amazing that a lot of people a lot of people can be pretty obsessive and not let go of something. Mm. So I, so even though you're going into it. Uh, and you think, oh, it'll be okay. A lot, a lot of people do stuff that they can't, uh, that they that can't believe they did, and they can't let go of. In layman terms, so uh, she relationship. gets some good oh, dick. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. right. <laughs> so listen, we've got another doctor on the line, Doctor Susie. She has a website, man. It's Doctor Susie Block. Her website is incredible. We looked it up. She, she, listen, she's wild. She's my buddy. She's your yeah. buddy, and she's, she's deep. She's deep. Dr. She's deep. Susie we got her. Doctor Susie Block, welcome to the Zo What Morning Show. Thank you for uh, not making some money because she's very busy and very expensive. <laughs> she took time off to call in and deal with this topic. Why do women Absolutely. like to be choked out in sex? I don't well, think men like yeah. to be choked. What? Yes, I Talk to me that about the violence. woman was the only one among your illustrious panel to confess to enjoying the power of surrender, which we all enjoy. I mean, men are not from Mars. Women are not from Venus. Women are more likely to admit, yes, I like to be forced. Force makes us feel like it's not our fault. We have so much shame, as you guys have been talking about. We have so much guilt about our fantasies that sometimes the only way we can enjoy it is if we imagine or if somebody we really actually in real life trust uh, pretends to force us. Now, this doesn't mean that we really want to be forced in real life. Nobody wants to be raped. But the rape <laughs> fantasy That's is tremendously true. enjoyable. By the way, to both men and women, and I don't expect any of you guys to confess enjoying that. But you know what, Dr. Susie? I had a girl who asked me to let's play rape. Yeah. She was like, sure. I want you to you rip my, rip my panties because, off. Because, as Ron and said very wisely, some of these crazy girls, they'll say, let's play, and then later they'll have regrets about it. They'll be they down at the precinct. They it while it happens because they do feel so much guilt. They want somebody to just, just force them, throw them down on the bed, choke them almost to death, and yet make them have this orgasm. Yes, the endorphins rise. Wow. But sometimes after that, girls have regret and then they accuse you and make them sign a waiver yeah dr susie what happens when you rape a girl and she chase you down for your phone number afterwards yeah you you better get it in a contract (laughs) form that's why a lot of these people in bdsm even though this contract i have to say does not stand up in court why do you think uh, most rock stars hi susie baby hey ronnie she's my buddy what no why do you think most rock stars have retired cops as their bodyguards. That's not that there for the man. Nobody wants to beat up Kid Rock. They're yeah. there for the women. Check their IDs, make sure they're the right age, to be a witness mm-hmm. to whatever goes mm-hmm. on in the back and, room. And Leave the door sure ajar a and hear everything. You know, of course, at least they're, for the before they're and witnessing after. 100%. The door's open. Then if the girl makes an act, they're like, hey, 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 I was right there. All I heard was, oh, baby, oh, baby. So, you know, so. Wow. And that's what you know, a lot, a lot of rock stars much, have retired we, cops. We, a lot of uh, people have been asking since Freud, what do women want? And women want just as much sex as guys. Men are not from Mars and more, women are from not more, from Venus. The 40s, 50s, but 60s, women more. are more fluid. You can't tell with us. We don't have this 
big thing. Well, in Ron's case, big. Thanks. But a Look, a black guy's here. There's a lot of big guys here. Right. Tells us <laughs> we are right. when we're turned on. He's probably the baby in well, this I'm room. Right. Yeah. <laughs> did you, did you guys hear what she just I'm said? Game. We can stand up. <laughs> Milton Pearl had a great line. I'll did just, you Did you hear I'll what she just said? To win. What did she say, Corey? <laughs> No, you should just listen to it. It's really interesting. She's basically saying women are fucking crazy. But That's what I heard. Elegant you way of saying it. <laughs> we are more fluid. We are more fluid. Thanks to our more adaptable anatomy and physiology, we don't need nagging boners. We don't need high testosterone. We don't need fancy fetishes or any arousal at all in order to mate and wow. procreate. And you have a, and Susan, we just need to put it in crass terms wouldn't you to agree, spread Susan? our legs. Susie, wouldn't you We don't agree? even need to have a good time. Lucky us. Susie, wouldn't wow. you agree? that most women are way more horny than men in the 40s, 50s, and 60s? Well, yeah. I mean, they some women, some women just put it away. Just, it's done. It's over. I'm, I'm going to channel my sex drive into my kids, into shopping for the most expensive Until thing my cheating husband up. can buy but me. But would you say that the average some girl or guy... It, and some of them, the ones who are sex positive, become more sexual in it than ever. These are the hot milk. More than the guy. More than the guy of equal age. Wouldn't you agree? <laughs> Well, yeah, because we can do it. <laughs> of course. I know it's true. Guys, when they get older, 40s, 50s, 60s, things don't work as well as before. That's why they got Viagra, Cialis, Yeah, and because yeah. women are more fluid, we do have more of a capability of doing it with different guys, doing it with women, doing it in, you know, different situations. Guys are so much more rigid. So can I ask a question about that? Fetish, yeah, they have yeah. What turns a- ask, on. If they don't have that, forget it. Go ahead, Corey. I totally agree. So, so is it, is, it just doesn't sound right. But the truth is, um, even though a woman can try to um, be composed and hold it together, the older she get, the fact that she's a whore is going to come out for the most part. Is that right? <laughs> wow. Well, it, I mean, if she's a whore, I guess that fact comes out. I yeah. mean, are we talking I think the about word the whore sounds bad. Or That's or why people don't want to admit table, it. You know? What he needs uh, is that a girl is mean, innocent in real life. We, that we he's all do something for money. Some of us just. Do well, sex. Those are the ones we look Ron, for. Ron put it right. Girls act innocent, but the truth you is, get in the bed, that's watch because they're fucking can. animals. Because they Guys, can. She's exactly right. If you didn't yeah. have a boner that that told on you, you would act innocent too. Because Quite. our society, as Ron said, religion, the government is so sex negative. We'd all like to act like and Susan, nothing would, turns and Susie, us would, on. It's just that agree? guys can't pretend. And Women also, do pretend because. We can. And wouldn't you agree that the girl who's the loudest loudest girl at the party, one who's acting the most boisterous, the most sexual, lifting up her dress, doing sexual things, is one of the last girls. Yes, it's the quiet one. It's the quiet one in the back who just smiles at you by the punch bowl. I know a quiet one. It's so hilarious. I got a form letter. Isn't that true, Susan? I have a form letter for that girl. Would you agree? Would you agree with my... It's not like our breasts flush or our nipples get hard. Sometimes our nipples get hard from being cold. It's... You know, you agree, I guess though? you guys have Vi- Viagra now, so you can pretend to be turned on when you're not. That's but true. But naturally yeah. speaking, you can't pretend to be turned on when you're not, and we can. When so, you're healthy, you don't need to be turned so on now. It's not always good for us. As a matter of fact, it turns us into doormats a lot of the time. I think women should get in touch with our feelings. I think we should acknowledge what turns us on, and I you think should we should share it with our partners and girls more. should masturbate. So, so let's do it this way. Let's do it this way. Well, really quickly. Hold, hold on, Ron. Masturbate. Hold on, Ron. Let's do it this way, because we all can't uh. talk at the same time. Jeff had a point that he wanted to make. Jeff, what was the point? That eh, moment's gone. You don't need the moment, Jeff. I got Jeff. a point. All right, oh, well. never mind. Oh, okay, never mind. Cut Jeff's mic off. Uh, Corey, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no, what, I, what, I was, what I was trying to say I is... I love you guys. Men do not need to be turned on to fuck when they're healthy. It's when you get... When, when your health mm. starts to deteriorate, that's when you need to be turned on or cut ah, the TV off or something like that. But when you're young... You can fuck somebody you can't stand. You can fuck but an you're ugly man when you're young. That's I, true. I, I think you are. You know, <laughs> young men are very turned on. They're turned on by the breeze blowing, let yeah. alone getting the themselves blown. Right. They're turned yeah. on by a lot of things. Life is a turn on. It's a wonderful thing. That's why so many older men. You know, their fantasies are based on their memories of when they were young. Mm. It's not so much the other That's person. It's the fact that they were young. And often that is why they like the MILFs, because they were really turned on by an older woman when they were young and when anything turned them on. I have one question for everybody at the oh, panel. Your voice I, is turning me on. I have, I one, pa- I have one question for everybody on the panel. Is MILF pussy, experienced pussy, better than young, Hell juicy no. pussy? 
Can we talk on that? Hell no. Come on. Look at Ron's so, face. I, li- I like them both. I like them both. You like them both. I like them both. So if you had your choice, you Ron, variety. to have variety is the uh, a very variety. attractive There's good things to young and there's good things to versus older. Versus a very young and vibrant, you know what I'm saying? Old. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, you're going to pick the young one girl. On, one on Thursday, one on Friday. Jeff Brown, take us out. Milf pussy, young pussy. Uh, the problem with young pussy is you can only fuck for so long, and then you have to talk, and that's where shit goes down. <laughs> I will take older mm-hmm. pussy. Men in fuck a older second. pussy as their options start to decline. No, I'm wow. doing And that's the truth. Dude, I can fuck whoever I want after a show. I'll take the one that I know is going to make me some brownies in the morning. Fuck this young chick. I don't like fucking young chicks because they talk too much. Take well, us out, like, Doc. Yeah, what, what about women? And then finally waking up and saying, what have I been putting it off for all these years? And is there uh, what happens in their head when they say, why, why, am I, why am I denying myself this? And then suddenly in their 40s and 50s, there's this raging thing to make up for everything they gave up that was kind of a, they, where they kind of bullshit of themselves. Okay, we got to take a quick break. That was a great question. Think about it, callers, 855-878-4652. This is a TV show, radio show, podcast. It's all, all right. happening at the same time. We'll all be back right. at 2.2 T-Radio V, Radio and TV Zone. What morning show? I'll be back. All of Brad is actually here right now. <laughs> I don't have the white disease. What's Whoa! <laughs> give, give me yeah. I want to see like some tiny intro. Got, got give me some boom. Yeah, give me some boom, bro. This is going to make us money. Ask Robert who his favorite celebrity animals are. Okay. <laughs> his animal lovers. Exactly. All right, everybody, whip your out. out. Everybody, whip it out. We'll be right back. See, now it's just. Let's do a couple things. Ready? Action. Or who oh, made monsters. You monsters. <laughs> You. <laughs> oh, that means me. Take it. It's your of the unreal mind. <laughs> to be honest with you, I like being down there a little more because my head was. <laughs> <laughs> Candy corn monsters, boom! Hi, I'm Kristen Renton, and I don't know what I'm saying. We're just world, world animal is. Right? Here we go. Oh, I'll just. Oh, I'm oh, real. It's not a real wall. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, unless you fake it. I had a contest on night calls, and they were all peeing everywhere. Everyone's like, can I get another Diet Coke? <laughs> yeah. We want to do more. Hey, Cosmo here, inviting you to join me every Saturday, 11 a.m. PST, for another boozy rendition of Historic Holes. We uncover the history and the mystery, the dirt and details, and even some facts and figures behind your favorite drinking establishment. That could be a corner pub, a rickety saloon, an infamous bar or tavern. It's been around so long, it's bound to be a fire hazard. They are all historic holes. From coast to coast and beyond, I'll be joined by actors, comedians, musicians. I even had a plumber on once. That's Historic Holes. I'm your host, Johnny Cosmo, every Saturday at 11 a.m. PST, right here at the future of online broadcasting. T, Radio V, and that's radio in TV. is beyond me. I don't get it. I don't, and he takes his shirt off. 
Oh my God, he looks like 50 pounds of chewed Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> all right, all right, all right, all right. Now you are in white fashion. You know white boys always leave the house like they're gonna help somebody move. <laughs> and defend the horrible house. There are some horrible people. And what you need to do is start policing your own. Uh, in keeping with the theme of the show, uh, shout out to Ron Jeremy, who is here with us. Uh, I have a lot of your work. Um, his, uh, for those of you who don't know, he's a porn superstar whose dick looks like a baby's arm holding an apple. Uh, wow, Jeff. Come on, dude. That's, the man's famous for that. Uh, <laughs> I think uh, we got to stop coming down so fucking hard socially on each other and not not just the people you don't know especially people you do know okay uh dudes ladies alike if there is something that uh the person that you want and the person that is with you won't give it to you you're not a freak for wanting it that person is the wrong person for the fucking job and they need to be fired if you need an umbrella shoved up your ass and opened in order to get where it is you need to be, and you need me to stand out on the patio with it after I take it out and wait till it rains, well then that's my shit, that's your shit. If I don't wanna stand on the patio with a shitty umbrella, then I don't need to be with you. But judging you for what you want in the bed is some bullshit. If it doesn't involve animals and little kids, what the fuck? Who's hurt? Who's the victim? Uh, stop letting the church pick who you fuck, cause they're fucking whoever they want. Shout out to Bishop Eddie Long. Including you. Yeah, including you. <laughs> okay. Um, young chick, uh, 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 older chicks who are holding out for that guy, uh, and too late. The guy you're talking about is fucking your niece. He's not looking for you. There's a song plays every <gasps> summer that, that, that kind of works against <laughs> women who hold out too long. It goes like this. Dun, 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 dun. Graduation. Dun, 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 dun. Fresh fucking batch. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'm, I'm done. That's I, it. Love That's it. I love it, I love it, I love it. Jeff's intellectual rant. Bobby G has joined the build, and he's going to weigh in on the topic, too. But Ron and Dr. Susie Block we were speaking about something. You know, about the, the kind of girls you like. Well, I've done surveys, and I've seen surveys from all over the country and Europe. And so what most men like, when they ask, like, what kind of head do you like? Or does she tickle the tongue, play with the balls, whatever. You know what the people are leaving out? The most important thing a girl does is enthusiasm. Most guys mm. would rather have a girl, and the doc is agreeing with me right here. They'd rather have a girl who might not be as good looking as, as a cheesecake queen, but she just loves your dick. Yeah. She, wants, she wants your schmeckle right in her face. <laughs> and, 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 that, and, and we love that kind of enthusiasm. Schmeckle. And would most of us guys, wouldn't you Schmeckle. all prefer a girl who might not be as good looking, but she just loves you? It's like when you go to a strip club, you're looking at a menu at a restaurant you're not going to have dinner at. Whereas if you got a girl you're going to have fun with and play with, we'll often take the enthusiasm over the looks, believe it or not. Am Absolutely. I right? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. We love enthusiasm. The, the girl just wants that penis, you know? So, Doc, we got Bobby Glanton Smith in here. Bobby, please give us the old school science on sexual freakiness. Are we freakier now than we were back in the day, or were Big Mama and them freaky too? Talk to us. Oh, it's, it's no question that today. Speaking of the mic, Bob. Oh, there's no question that today it's all it's all in. People are doing whatever they really want to do. Uh, sex was repressed uh, in the 50s and 60s and part of the 70s, and that's when the revolution kind of took off, the sexual revolution, so to speak. Uh, freaky is a diff difficult word to kind of wrap my head around because it, it varies from culture to culture. You know, what's freaky to some people is normal to others. Now, some of us fundamentalists, in the, in the context of uh, this conversation, there's so many things going on today that just baffled my mind. You know, I'm still like down with the male-female thing. And so this conversation is refreshing because I think it gives people an opportunity so, to open up about what it is they really want to do. So, Bobby, from your era, you live now, but from your oh, era, what yeah. is the freakiest thing that you're seeing now that just... I don't even want to see it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, could, I couldn't make it past that shit you put on last What do you week, think man? about Michael Sam? We dealt with that last oh, week. Oh, hey. <laughs> Putting the cake <laughs> I in didn't the get little boy far. face. I didn't get that far. I didn't make it past the first kiss. You, you know, know, Oprah set that up. I just want to let y'all know. I Oprah is Oprah is part. Oprah nobody. is the devil. 
I'm not gonna put anything fast anybody. But uh, as far as what turns me on, it's, it's, it's something that the brother here just mentioned. It's that excitement, man. It's nothing greater than having a woman look at you and say, "Come on with it." You but know. isn't Can excitement the hardest thing to manufacture no, in a, no, in a you sexual don't, you don't movement? No, it's not. You don't manufacture that. Everybody uh-huh. can get excitement. It's just people overachieve in the dating game. You have to date somebody that's happy to be with you. It's just most of the time that person don't look like you want them to look like. That's what it is. Stop overachieving. So you said everybody's superficial then. You Every, gotta, you everybody gotta saying on settle, some level. Settle a little. Yeah, settle. you have to settle if you want somebody to be happy to be with you. Ooh, you know, that's you know, heavy. You know, you know, sometimes these, these uh, hot looking women they they know that you're using them. They feel like you're masturbating into them. They, uh, I remember I, I I saw this woman years ago, and the husband said, "I'm getting divorced." I said, "Well, it's a free country." He said, "No, my my ex-wife is a, on a scale of one to ten. She's a 13." Mm. And I said, "Well, that, no." She, he said, "I'm going to send her in here. You're going to see her a few times." And when she came in, I mean, it was kind of nice to look at someone who was a 13. Mm-hmm. But then what? And, and I thought, "Well, this this is better than looking at someone who's a three. But uh, I didn't well, go that day. Yeah, yeah, yeah there you <laughs> go. No, but when she was talking, what she was saying is, is I'm in this world to make kind of insecure men ha- have other men be envious of them. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I I'm in mm-hmm. this world to be on someone's arm." So that people can uh, look at him and say, "How did he get her?" And Trophy. So, you know, yeah, yeah. So, so uh, I think sometimes a lot of I think the more beautiful women, the girl, the more bitch. arrogant, the more self entitled, no, and I think the the more and the more resentful, the more underdeveloped that's too. That's not helpful. Depends. No, it's not, no, 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 I'm not no, saying. No, listen, no, we're no. not we're not speaking in absolutes. Okay, I'm saying in general, most women and men who have everyone coming to them have a more difficult time developing who they are because of the attention Absolutely. that's okay, always yeah, I'll get coming. Down. Yeah. So that's what that's what I tend to see. Dr. Susie, she oh, she dropped. We we're going to get her back, but again, I just think and this has been my experience. Oh, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. There's less time to go, why aren't they coming? What do I need to work on? What yeah. am I missing? And once that shit fades? And, yeah. And then when they oh. get older, and then they find out that the beauty isn't where it was back in the day when everybody was coming to them. That's when they start learning some of those lessons. And it's unfortunate that those lessons come later in I life. I have witnessed this a couple of times, and it's it's mm. almost tragic. Where you can look at a woman and tell she was that shit in 91. She was a bomb. And then she walks into a room, and for the first time, no one gives a fuck. Think about and, Jasmine Guy. Oh, wow. Yeah, she looked like Skeletor now. Yeah. Oh, my God. But that bitch looked like the Emperor on Gladiator movie. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Palpatine right. from Star Wars. Right. Oh, Let man. them fight. <laughs> it's a trap. <laughs> Send them into the dark. Uh, I'll I'll just say this. Dr. Release Susie is is back on the line. Yes, I am. Dr. I want to ask you a very specific question about the origin of guilt and mm-hmm. a, as it pertains to sexual freedom. Yeah. How, I mean, how can we extrapolate the guilt? Just take it out of our relationships. Well, we can't take it out completely, and maybe we shouldn't. I mean, do we want everybody masturbating in the street? You know. Do you think if first, we didn't no. have any no guilt, how, we would I do wear that? nice how shoes? Liberal, your parents are. They're going to tell you, you know, I, uh, you know, that you can play with yourself, but maybe you should do that in private. So immediately the child feels some guilt about doing it in public, which, of course, is what children would like to do. So they do it. They learn to do it in private. They learn to put their clothes on. They learn to not run around with their ass hanging out. I mean, this is part of being civilized. This is part of our burden we must bear as people that feel that we need to be dressed but in it, public. Doc, it sounds you know, like you're talking yes, about morals course, more so than guilt. Our government, our school, right? and our religion lays it on very thick and makes us feel guilty about things that She's are totally listening. unnecessary. She doesn't hear me. Okay. Dr. No. Su- Dr. Susie, I was just saying, it sounds like you're talking more about morals, moral development, than guilt. Because I think guilt in any capacity is not so good. Well, in any no, sometimes you should feel guilty, like when you lie, like when you cheat. Guilt is not a bad thing. Shame is pretty bad. Uh, shame, shame is part is of our religion. Bad. You know, shame is just feeling I'm a bad person. Guilt is feeling I did a bad thing. And sometimes we do bad things. And but we most need to parents parent with shame. You should feel guilty. 
Is it wrong to fuck your wife in front of y'all three year old child and say, "Look, motherfucker, this is how you got here"? Is that wrong? <laughs> I'm asking. Is that well, wrong? Well, maybe in a in another world, it's not wrong. I I guess in our society, or close it, the door. It would right. be you want a brother, don't I you? Mean, well, not <laughs> three, maybe six. That's or a six tough years one. I thought you were going to say to, <laughs> to have bad. sex with your wife in front of a big group of people, and I would say nothing's wrong with that. You know. Um, it, oh, you say nothing's wrong with fucking your wife in front of everybody. Often comes in to help us to deal with life. Wow, no, that's a good but point. One person's fantasy is another person's nightmare. I mean, Ooh. I hear you guys talking a lot about, you know, when I'm with someone new, I don't want to hear them talking. Of course, that's yeah. true of a lot of us. You know, sharing fantasies I isn't usually know. necessary when you first have sex together. So much is new in reality. Your mind doesn't have to go much farther than the present <laughs> moment and that body and that yoni and that whatever to just get excited. But when you're in that long-term relationship, like Ron was saying, when you've been together for a long time, you get to really know that body so well <laughs> that fantasy is there for you to reach out and experience novelty once again, to bring that into your long-term marriage. Dr. So, Susie Block, Corey has a point to make. Corey? So sure. I just want to ask her, do you think if a man is around a woman um, for a long time, I'm talking about, and I'm being honest here, like yeah. for the most part, most relationships. Do you think he wants to hear anything she got to say? Well, Maybe. unfortunately Maybe. not, because he wants what? to just put her into a compartment, compartmentalize her. Wow. And Where I think she that's belong? unfortunate. <laughs> I think we should be open to our spouses. And women don't always want to hear what guys have to say. But either. we don't I talk think to we you. We believe you. We believe you. No, we believe you. Yeah. And that is the death. Oh, we don't of say shit. So we believe you. Death of love. Don't talk over. Let her finish. Uh, you Ron? Know, one thing about marriage, it, it relies on trust. And when you, when, you're, when you give your partner surprises, you lose that trust. But trust kills lust. Lust and trust are not exactly Ooh. bedfellows. So wow. once you trust someone, you lose your lust. Well, you when said, you lust after someone, it's usually someone you can't trust. The key to a happy, long-term marriage wow. is to somehow combine lust and trust. Now you also and fantasy just drop is there to help us. So, so every now and then, just leave your wife standing out in front of the work waiting on you. Did you? <laughs> well, wait a minute. Did y'all hear what she just said? I did. Trust kills lust. Please sad say true. Please say more about that. That was a heavy, that was a bomb. Well, it's sad but true. I mean, what he was saying, we, you know, you don't want to hear something from your woman about something new. You want to trust her. You want to trust that she's the same woman you've always known. It's the same that women feel about men. But the unfortunate thing about that desire to trust that we need in order to be good parents and to pay our taxes and to rely on our partner is that that kills lust. Because wow. lust is all about surprises. It's Spontaneity. All about, wow, this is new. This is crazy. Like you said, crazy women. You can't trust them. So if you can combine the lust, the craziness, the wildness, the the unpredictability, the, yeah. the you know the the crazy wild feelings with trust then you've got a happy marriage. Like, oh, my God. Kind of oh, my God. That was hit. That was heavy. We're going we're gonna to contest it when we come back. Great right. information. we got to take a quick break. We'll be back in two seconds. So what? You know, um, exported into the country. means it should mean that you don't think it's right. And if you don't think it's right, then you need to look in your own backyard and see what yeah, you're doing. Somebody got to draw the buses out to the sticks. Somebody got to make the ink for fingerprints. Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? This your boy Crazy Bone. Man, I'm the bum Keith G, man. And whenever you sitting at home and can't shake the monkey off your back, yeah, yeah. then just know every Wednesday from 7 to 9 p.m., right. you can tune in to the Quick Fix and get your fix on, man. Right here on TRadioV.com, baby. Radio and TV. So how they gonna see us on the radio, then? Radio, I, I don't know. Or is it TV and radio? But it's, it's it, one of them. I gotta figure this radio and TV thing out though, bro. I don't Get understand. Together. I'm gonna Get tell my together. mom what we how she gonna see. Get it us. together. Hey guys, I'm Danny Boy. And I'm Nako Nolan. See what I mean? Hey guys, I'm Danny Boy O'Connor. And I'm Nako Nolan. And we're the Del. <laughs> That's not written down. Alright, well, I'm gonna do it my way. Okay. No, it's okay. I just it's Watch us as we uncover. And we're the Delta Bravo Urban Exploration Team. Join us every Friday from 7 to 9 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Or 10 to midnight for our East Coast friends. Watch us as we uncover, discover, and explore music, movie, and true crime locations. The Delta Bravo Show every Friday, 7 p.m., right here on T Radio V. Radio and TV. Just put your hand like, like that. that. T Radio V. 
What did you play opposite Andy, Eric? Do you remember? Uh, Andy and I worked as uh, two employees at a network. Okay. Oh, you're and forgetting the other I, thing. I played, I played, I played a news anchor and he played a reporter. Okay, but the other thing you did, the thing you did on the Andy Dick show, who did you play to Andy? Oh, uh, is, is that to play my sister? You played his wife, Denise. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you played his wife. Yeah. So you what's wrong with that, Eliza? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing's wrong with that. He's got just, a great range as an actor. Uh, you know? Yeah, it just was funny. Encounters with Eric and Eliza Roberts, Wednesdays from 2 to 4 p.m. on T Radio V. Hi, I'm Sheriff John Bennell. You're watching T Radio. Radio and TV? What? <laughs> that was perfect. Uh, that was perfect. Yeah, no, Why are you asking me to do this after 12 drinks? <laughs> Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Sexual tastes vary from person to person, but with the current pornography epidemic, as some call it, one has to wonder how exactly this may affect our desires and perception of sexuality. Moreover, how does it affect our sex lives? Pornography constitutes about 25% of all search engine requests and is the fourth most common reason people give for going on the internet. And while it may seem to simply facilitate an instinctual sexual response linked to millions of years of evolution, the truth is, pornography has dynamically changed over time, ultimately molding our tastes and desires. The not-so-shocking truth is that pornography has profound consequences for the brain and acts in many ways like a drug. With prolonged exposure, your tolerance is increased and many often find themselves addicted. Though it's not a physical substance, it leads to the same general loss of control, the compulsiveness to seek out the activity despite negative consequences, and withdraw when it goes away, much like that of gambling or running, for example. The issue is that continued exposure can cause long-term or even lifelong neuroplastic change in the brain. Dopamine is released as a reward whenever we accomplish something, whether it be eating to sustain life or sexual activity to produce future life. And this dopamine consolidates neural connections in order to drive us to perform the same activity in the future. In other words, it alters and forms the brain cells to motivate certain actions. It rewires your brain. The National Institutes of Health measure drug addictiveness by testing rats. The rat is trained to press a button in order to get a drug, and the harder it works indicates how addictive the substance is. It turns out that the more addictive a drug is, the more dopamine we see released. And while there is, unfortunately, no rat porn that we can give to them, we do know that dopamine is also released during sexual excitement, which pornography plays right into. The more time you spend doing it, the more dopamine gets released, which reinforces the behavior and makes you not only desire it in the future, but require it. And as you begin to imagine these images away from the computer or while having sex, they become reinforced. Furthermore, each orgasm releases even more dopamine, which consolidates the connections made during the session. It's a feedback loop that becomes harder to escape. And just like a drug, your tolerance for visual stimulation has now compounded, making it more difficult to be turned on by reality. Pornography addiction can often lead to finding your mate less attractive. The good news is, it doesn't have to be permanent. Usually when people understand the mechanism and realize it's affecting their relationships, they can stop. The brain is often described as a use it or lose it system because the neural connections you stimulate grow stronger and desire to be activated, while the ones you ignore become weakened. Much like your muscles, which, if sitting still all day, itch for activity, but after prolonged non-use, they become complacent. Luckily, because of this use it or lose it brain, the same neuroplastic system that proliferates these habits can also be used to acquire healthier ones. Got a burning question you want answered? Ask it in the comments. Yeah, exactly. Wow, Facebook, Twitter, uh, a, a nice yeah. little schooling session on the video. Of course, Jeff wasn't listening at all. Really? He was talking. But Would you like for me to break it down? Break it down, Jeff. Okay, basically what he was saying <laughs> is that there is a physical chemical loop made by watching too much porn. Now, in my opinion, that's very true for weak dudes. Uh, what do you mean weak dudes? Dude? I mean dudes. Go into it. I mean dudes that in the first place... Uh, their vagina roster wasn't that deep to begin with. <laughs> um, dudes, the vagina roster. Yeah, yeah. yeah he, he, I know I'm fucked up. I can't. I like. I, it take me about forty minutes to watch some porn if I'm a drag off to it. I gotta find a scene to turn me <laughs> on. Yeah, I gotta find. But that's. 
you got to get your. I, I got certain you're porns with in the, certain spots right. where that's just my spot. I just need that spot right there right. where both the girls is when I was a rookie, and they I needed, kiss each other. That's my spot. Ah, okay, when no, I was a rookie, I used baby one. oil, but I don't fuck up no more sheets no more. No, I used <laughs> lotion, the jelly, water based, <laughs> KY jelly warming, nothing oil based. Ron, <laughs> like I can see your comments made during the break. <clears throat> Interesting. I'm I'm kind of mixed on how I feel about some of that. I love Susan Block to hear that. Is Susan, oh, yeah. you there? She's here. Yeah, I Susan's am here. here. He said, like, uh, the, man, the man is the Batman and to the woman. I, so, hold I, on, wait, I, I wait, do wait, think wait, that wait, calling wait. porn or any kind of sex and addiction is misleading. No, well, Ask the question again, uh, Ron. It's a, he said about the, the guy is the Batman, the girl's the Robin. I, I was now, saying, now, what, what, we're, we're, we're addressing this to Susan. Susan, Corey, yeah. during the break, comedian Corey Holcomb during the break, was saying that the problem with sexuality and all of this stuff that's happening in our society today is because women feel they are equal to a man in a relationship in a productive relationship um, Batman is the man and Robin is the woman she's there to back him up I thought the woman was Catwoman that's no, no, fine. No, no. Okay, we'll go with that. I mean, she can be Catwoman. We'll go with that. I think there's lots of Cat different Catwoman was a whore. Whore. He was saying that, that the kids could grow up, if they see the dad not being dominant, they can grow up as, I guess you said, little faggots. So <laughs> a lot of men like being dominated. Maybe you guys don't, and that's no, we don't. fine. But a, a lot of men like that, and a lot of women like women. Some men like men. Okay. There's also uh, transgender uh, okay. people. There's all kinds of people. There's all kinds of combinations but yeah i think that a lot of heterosexual men perhaps are having a little crisis of confidence and that's what turns some of them to porn it's not an addiction but one of the speakers was saying you know guys that don't get enough yoni it's true guys that are shy men like who like porn. to be dominated produce little boys who wear like pink porn. pants hear what he said susan? oh wow susan say that again i said men who like to be dominated <laughs> produce little boys who prefer to wear pink pants to school. Men, let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. Most of the yeah. time, I want to hear her comment on that. Uh, one. I, 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 right? No, I'm saying well, most of the times I mean, when you are with of, a, a lot man, of police officers, a lot of my clients who are cross dressers are uh, CEOs and police officers and uh, and firefighters. Uh, they're very powerful men. Nature often seeks a balance, and the more powerful you have to be in marriage and family and work, sometimes the more in your deepest, darkest fantasies that you can't share with anyone except maybe your therapist or your mistress, that's where you surrender, and maybe that's when you wear panties. She wow. Hey, 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 like hey, 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 Jeff, Jeff Brown. Brown. Uh, Doc, 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 I'm going to have to... <laughs> Uh, By the uh, way, comedians are also a big candidate for wearing panties under their clothes. Okay, well that's fine. Now, I can yeah, agree with that. Yeah, I can agree with that. Most of the guys that I, I can agree with that. Men often have <laughs> fantasies of surrender. Who does? Uh... Jeff Brown has hey, something Doc. to say. So do powerful women, by the way. It's the most, Doc, it's the women CEOs it's the people that you've love been around, that, that uh, yeah. you know, surrender <laughs> fantasy. And by the way, if you're going to do any choking, take a class. I, I seriously oh, really? do not recommend any of these choking games unless you really know what you're doing. So wow, you Jeff Brown. Wait, so wait, Jeff Brown has something to, to respond to the doc. Jeff, yeah, doc, 30 I, seconds, Jeff. I really don't. I, 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 it's tough for me to, to, to co-sign that with regard to... Uh, CEOs and police officers as being alpha males. A lot of them I don't count as dominant just because they have a lot of power. The most powerful man I ever knew the, the, was my grandfather who was an alpha male. And I'm willing to bet my pinky finger I don't have any concrete evidence, but I bet you he wasn't wearing no panties. I and bet you he wasn't sharing his sexual fantasies with you. Okay. Oh, no. No, he was No, he was not. But right. the, but the concept so you don't know. But the and, concept and nothing against him and nothing against men that have these fantasies or men that have domination fantasies, but we generally don't share our fantasies with most people. Oh, that's Dr. fair. Dr. Susan, right? Dr. Susan. Yeah. Dr. Susan, uh, listen, yeah. listen, let me tell you something. Yeah. I swear this is the truth. And and and, 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 and I, Ron is listening to mm -hmm. me because I, I think he I might co-sign me on this. <laughs> Men will tell a bitch anything. <laughs> You can't believe <laughs> nothing no man had told you because no, he's trying to get some pussy from yes. you. Now, Jeff, <laughs> finish, I can't really no, finish the thought. Finish it. Yeah, yeah, you guys will tell us anything. Just finish the thought, really, Jeff. I don't really buy that. that yeah. So finish the thought, Jeff. Um, honestly, I, I, there, there's, a, there's, a, there's a way that society is going, and this is right in the middle of it. Uh, and I'm sorry. I'm a caveman. 
you uh you're gonna have to wait two three hundred years mm, until I'm a cave woman until well well <laughs> cave Finish women it, Jeff. I'm trying I swear to God I'm trying uh three hundred years from now the pussification of the North American male will be complete uh mm. right now I'm, mm. I'm 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 I might as well have been from the forties I don't I don't subscribe to this uh what we were really saying is or what I was really saying is that uh men and women are different and we're not equals my word is first <laughs> my word my wife's word is first my <laughs> word is final and that is kind of trickling over into sex where the beta male opinion of sex is becoming the top opinion yeah interesting yeah, what, 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 what do you mean by beta male opinion of sex give us an example of a beta male's opinion of sex that's trickling over into the power structure here oh you know what uh uh homosexuality should be okay with everybody seeing it, seeing as how it's being force fed to everybody, um, there are some people, and I don't have anything against uh, male homosexuality. You don't? No, I don't. That's I the, do. Well, dude, that's the no. As a, I it, ain't scared. That's their shit. Fuck all the moist motherfuckers. <laughs> <laughs> that's their shit. If that's what they want to yeah. do, let them do it. Let them but chili dog all day long. Exactly. Huh? Oh, exactly. <laughs> if you want to take meat stick in the cornhole, that's your shit. You do what you want to do, but don't make me like it. Don't don't. So make, you're saying homosexuality. Not. Is kind of like making you like it. Huh? What's you're that? saying homosexuality is kind of like Yo, you son. know how we talked about white privilege. You saying now there's a homosexual privilege yeah, going. Well, well, yeah. It's, it's, what it's, if your it's, son, fourth grade teacher, his husband come up there to the school and they kiss like that, like like in Michael front of Kevin, the class, in front of the kids. You you telling me you ain't gonna feel no kind of way about that? No, and, I'm not saying that. That's and not kids, what I wait, kids are uh, harsher I mean, than we are. I don't it. want my my I don't want my uh, heterosexual son's teacher. Kissing his wife in front of my son. I do. No, I, no. Be like, son, that's how you do a bit right there. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we got to take another break. When we Woo! come back, we're going to wrap it up. It's crazy. So what mornings? Holla in a second. Just beautiful black brothers and sisters. And from my pain, they still profit today. Some of the biggest banks like B of A on slaves, man. America the beautiful. We don't see any American dream. We've experienced the American night culture. T Radio V. We got Scott and Brad from Slater's 5050. What's up, you guys? There was one thing I wanted to bring up, which was the pancake, the fried chicken pancakes. Yeah. 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 What we did is we do two buttermilk pancakes at the bottom, three pieces of fried chicken, the homemade country bacon-infused gravy. gravy, and then we put, of course, bacon on top of that, fried egg, another pancake on top of that, and the real maple <laughs> syrup just drown in the whole thing. You guys, I must say, are pretty fit for eating all this yeah, stuff. Well, thank you very much. I, I mean, appreciate that. So you guys yeah. don't eat your food. <laughs> Fork and Amazing, Mondays, 5 p.m. on T Radio V LA. T Radio V. I found the greatest invention this week. It's a bed that's made for cuddling. It's called the cuddle mattress. And look, you can slop your elbow in. <laughs> oh my. And what about yeah. the remote? That's my biggest concern. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you would seriously. I already lose my remote and I have a normal bed and it gets like caught in my blanket. Yeah. <laughs> you shag in one and then when you get it all like wet and messy, you sleep in the <laughs> other. And that's kind of what you need in life. You need like a bed to shag in and a bed to sleep in. It's the Suicide Girls Thursday, 6 p.m. on T Radio V. Well, howdy. I'm Miss Laura, host of Miss Laura's Civil Wars. We do it every Saturday at 10 a.m. We talk about what's in the news that everybody's fussing and fighting about this week because y'all are rude. We have a roundtable of media experts and we bring in celebrity guests from the world of entertainment. So join us on Miss Laura's Civil Wars every Saturday at 10 a.m. on TRadioV.com. Radio and TV. Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. We men want to take a woman in our arms, and a girl wants to take a man in her arms, and pretty soon we want to take him to bed with us. Go on. Go over there and touch it. Which arms? Put your hand on her breast. See how far you can take your hand. See how far she'll let you go. Go ahead, girl. Touch him at the most sensitive part of his body. There is one place in the woman's body 
and one place in the man's body that creates multiplication. There are not two, there are not three, there are not four places, there are not ten places, there is one place in the woman's vagina and the man's male organ. There's only one place in the woman's body where the male organ was designed to, to penetrate the vagina. Only one organ made to bring forth life. It's the male organ. It's not in lesbianism where the tongue of a female goes into the vagina of another female. It's not in the male where the male organ goes into the part of the, of the body where the, the waste matter comes out of the body that's poison and he penetrates that part of the body in homosexuality. It's not to be put in the body. The body. <laughs> the body. <laughs> but, did he, but did he lie Listen, about anything? <laughs> the, the, the definition of sodomy is anything other than vagina and penis, which includes oral sex and anal sex. You know, in the Eastern District of Virginia and parts of Atlanta, it actually is against the law. Yeah. And yeah, so Robert Williams it's against the law of joke. So Robert Williams, when they made these laws, said, let me get this straight. You commit sodomy in Atlanta, they're going to throw you in jail you're going to get sodomized. Wow. <laughs> That's hey, funny. so listen, uh, Dr. <laughs> Susie is online. Yeah. Dr. Susie, i got to wrap you really quickly, but before we do... Wrap me. Uh, yes, indeed. That sounds like a fetish. Yeah, yeah. In cellophane? Or like, what are you going to wrap me in? Latex? Yeah. Or maybe. your arms? Maybe some, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, anyway. Some voice proof material. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, mm -hmm. we want your website, right? Dr. Susan Block Institute, one word, dot com. Dr. Susan Block Institute. Dot com. She's got all types of toys and all types. You know, a lot of my uh, everybody here wants to know how does one get certified in the art of choke a bitch? Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean uh, choking. I'm well, sorry. Ron could From the probably give tribe. lessons, uh, but there are experts in BDSM uh, all over the place that that do give lessons in how to do that wow. in a safe way. Wow. Because wow. it is very dangerous. Wow. And, and one more time, Look the website... David Carradine. David Carradine yeah. supposedly died from that, yeah. right? Actually, Michael, it's Michael very Hutchins. very dangerous. You, it's just yeah. a, you're a second away from death there. Wow. And, you know, you don't want to be uh, put on the stand over that, like saying, she asked for it. Because no you can't ask her. You. Yeah, you can't ask her afterwards. That's no. why you got to record. Be very, very careful for your own sake as well as hers. <laughs> well, or we want to... Well, we want to... We want to thank you for taking the time to be with us today. It my was pleasure. awesome. It's been a lot of fun. And I'm the next have time... fantasies about all you guys now, and that'll improve my marriage. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And the next time, come in and bring some of your toys so we can really well, exploit yeah, you. Well, you know, that'll, that'll be the next time. I like, I like to start with a little tease, you know? Excellent. Teasing is pleasing. There it is. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thank you, darlings. It. Good luck. All Enjoy right. your fantasies tonight. Absolutely. Her and and really quickly, guys... Yeah, take her over a 19... Wouldn't you take her over a 19-year-old? Fuck yeah. Hell yeah. Can See you that? imagine her See talking to you? 30 Corey. seconds. Corey, you're not fucking me right. What I want Love you to you do right. is... <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we got one more guest on the line. She wants to talk about endorphins. It's Dr. Lakeisha Sumner. Lakeisha. She's a doctor, man. Lakeisha Sumner. Lakeisha, <laughs> talk to us about the endorphins and all this other stuff we get addicted to. Aren't endorphins like similar to drugs or they're related to drugs in some kind of way? Talk to me. Well, they're neurochemicals in the brain. And um, when we do things, um, some behaviors, we have a neurochemical release. Uh, for example, if you're thinking about pornography addiction, for example, dopamine is the primary chemical uh, that's involved because it's responsible for sexual arousal and response. Um, so when we're thinking of people who may do cocaine, for example, um, yeah. it acts directly on the dopamine system. Wow. And it surges when we're exposed to novel stimuli and it's especially if it's sexual stimuli, okay? Wow. Or when the stimuli is more arousing than what you anticipated. So one of the reasons why people like porn oh. 
is because erotic imagery triggers more dopamine than sex with someone that you're familiar with. Wow. So you say to me, well, why is that a problem? It's a problem because the more pornography you, you consume, guess what? The more you want. There's a feedback loop. Okay? So it's almost like a drug in a sense. Now, some people may say to me, well, food and drugs, they also um, can release dopamine. The problem with pornography, and there is some safe pornography for couples, but the vast majority of it, um, it can really trigger this dopamine effect. Um, but it, pornography offers extreme novelty. So well, you're that's constantly a good point. looking for something that you haven't seen. You want more stimulus, mm -hmm. right? right? And um, unlike drug and foods, Internet porn doesn't eventually activate the brain's neural um, aversion system. Okay? Wow. Wow. So listen, uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's Dr. Lakeisha Sumner. Uh, she was on the show last week. We're going to be bringing her back from time to time to drop that kind of information. I think that kind of information is important to the con to, to the conversation because it adds a bit more context. Uh, uh, the studied version, the the and and, and doc, uh, you don't care, do you? Do you? Go ahead. Let's hear. Uh, wait a minute. We got folks talking about something that's really just organic. I mean. If you got to go to school to learn how to fuck, man, then something's going terribly wrong. <laughs> with you, man. Terribly Great. wrong. Come on, man. You ain't getting fucked right. Come on, man. Yeah. I mean, all these yeah. explanations. That was the clinical version, Bobby. Man, that's too, we got too many doctors, man. Too many doctors, man. and not yeah. enough practical experience, man. Well, you know, you this. Say, no, no, you got to say it like you said. It. Well, yeah, well, just a minute ago, Bobby, when you was over here complaining about not oh, talking. Yeah, yeah, she, <laughs> now come yeah, on. She said, "What was Jeff? You tell said what she, said, you, she done too much." In, uh, 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 it was brilliant. Was it shift in business? He said, uh, yeah, it was some shift in business. He okay. said, uh, <laughs> she done done, she know too much about it and ain't done enough of it. That's what it was. That's what, yeah. No, didn't get back there. But one more Bobby. quick point about that other woman that was on there uh, talking about men in panties. Uh, I don't know a man that I know personally that, you know, considers himself a man has ever even thought about putting on some panties. You put on what? some panties, you got something wrong with you. Well, I, I believe that's because we don't know every aspect of every man we uh, know. I know me. And I, I ain't and never that's true. put no panties But on. if I see you in some panties, I ain't <laughs> fucking with you no more. It's I'm, over. It's the way I'm going to treat you from now on. I'm going to be <laughs> like that boy weird, and I don't want him around my kids. He on the that's pink true. side of the force. That, yeah. He's on the pink side of the force? Yeah, he's... <laughs> Okay, you, you know what? That's the, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know it is hard. I know it's 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 such a stretch. But there are there are some males who exist who don't have any thoughts that have to do with anything with women sexually other than fucking them. And I know that's crazy because that's of not all crazy. Of, no, but there no, are there are comics. Made to see. I agree when she said there are comics who who like the uh, boys Just go who ahead play and say with his boys. name. I can say a lot of them, guys. Say, say some names. There's a whole colony of them. And when you get into an <laughs> argument colony, with one of them, colony, look, like ants. I got into an argument with this comic named Dave Arnold. Uh oh. And every comic who I thought was moist was calling my phone talking about I'm wrong for that. <laughs> so instead of them admitting y'all all fucking, you acting like I'm just a bad what guy. What's argument about? Right. Y'all all fucking. What you intimately the, involved with Dave what Arnold. What was the argument about? You see Still him? in jokes. That's what they do. Oh yeah, yeah. But I'm just saying, it's like you know, what I'm saying. I know it's gay entertainers. That's part of the game. I'm not mad, yeah, at, mad them. at them. Yeah, just, that's just don't bring that shit toward me. Thank no, you. I, 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 I'm gonna ask Ron something quickly. Uh, you know, uh, this is a real out of left field. You know, it says in the Torah that sex should be had in the dark because when you don't see the other person, your imagination can keep you turned on to them longer. That could be Godzilla. Years. What do you think it's? Uh, yeah, that's no, terrible. No, no, no. Godzilla got that wet foot. No, 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 no. But, but the, you but, see, Godzuki no, was born. No, 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 but, but I think I think the point There's is another does lizard point, out there. Does what you see in the pornography and all that stuff? Does it jazz you up continually? So that everything becomes dull, and 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 so what's happened? A lot is not left to your imagination. But that could so be that could be MTV. It. That could be watching Christina Aguilera shake her body. That could be R-rated and as well. Or you could right. go out the street, go to a nude beach. You could see, go to a museum and see. No, nude but I think the reason they wrote this thousands of years ago is, is they wanted you to stay interested in your wife, interested in having well, sex. No, I want to see, see my penis. 
going in and out yeah. of my woman. Yeah, that is a turn on Hasidic for me. Well, yeah. What you say about the Torah, Hasidics actually do that. What if she but had they a also C-section? shave the woman's head afterwards. Of course, what if she had a C-section? Yeah. 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 And now in Arab countries, I don't want to see her C-section. Right, 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 right. It's a lot of practices are really almost barbaric. That's where that goes. Jews don't do that, but but yes, the Hasidics they have the hole in the sheet so you can't enjoy the sex. It's not for procreation, not for fun. Yeah, there's a whole like like that's why I said earlier in the broadcast. You know, Greek and Romans, you know, are doing the right thing. You know, fun, all kinds of great sex. Or you saying there was a sexual the freedom. Judeo there. Christians came along and put in this guilt thing, which yeah. then changed everything around. Wow, I don't that's think excellent. the Lord above really meant that we had to be totally monogamous yeah. as long as it's consensual. Yeah. Listen, we're about to wrap it up. Uh, we got one more segment, the final thought segment, and then we're going to promote everybody's whereabouts, what they're doing, what's going on. We're going to wrap this topic up with my final thought. I'm going to take a quick break, and I'll be back in two seconds. It's been a great one. Holla in a second. It's only me, it's never you who gets rocky. No matter what I will go through. I lift my hands, I back my head because I trust you. I know you will never leave me. It's only me, it's never you who gets rocky. We are live. This is happening now. That's the Lonely Wild, and they're in studio. And we are here with... Hey, hello. Hey! We got a, a, a maximum capacity. I don't know if there's a fire hazard going on right now. <laughs> yeah, joined by the West Coast Celine Dion. Yeah. Alex Johnson. Oh my God. I just want to hear you sing all night. This voice. That's so nice. Well, thank you. Yeah, new regime. It's called Exhibit A. It's the latest release. The oh, magic of radio. <laughs> That's crazy. Hello, I'm Christina Fulton with my show, which is called Playing It Forward, here at Tay Radio V, where we interview the most incredible people in the world. Shh, shh, shh. Who is it? President Obama. Ah! Well, I'm going to tell you we're going to be in the trenches looking for people that are not paying it forward. Mr. President, I'm going to tell you something. I'm so happy you called me because over here at T Radio V, we need your support. Pay attention. T Radio V has my show playing it forward every Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. T Radio V. T Radio V. And if they don't give back, <sighs> Hey, what's up? I am Scott. And I am Ken. We are not the Chemical Brothers, but we are, <laughs> we are the Crystal Method. And you are watching T Radio V. T Radio V. Radio in TV. Radio in TV. Ladies and gentlemen, Zowat is back in the building. It's been an incredible show. Uh, again, the shows are not designed to answer all of your questions, but they are designed to rattle your cage, so to speak, your psychological cage, uh, to get you to think, rethink, reevaluate who you are and what you are. And as is commonplace, uh, just listening to everybody's valuable uh, input, Corey, Bobby, uh, Dr. Susie Block, uh, Lanish, Dr. Lanisha Sumner, uh, uh, of course, Ron Jeremy, Dr. Goulston has returned, and my good man, my right-hand man, Jeff Brown in the building. All of this information is valuable, but we don't, we don't claim to have all of the answers. But in taking in what everyone has said, everybody's input, what I'm starting to realize is... Guilt is inbuilt in our sexuality, right? And it serves as a, I mean, there's like a, a, a social, cultural, and religious uh, perfected persona. It's almost like a personality condom that we're wearing that prevents us from actually making contact with another person for fear of being judged, 
for fear of being labeled, for fear of being condemned. Uh, Now, for me, if I can't be real with my woman, the real question is, do we really have relationship? Because relationship in and of itself, the term itself means to be related, to relate. And if I'm relating with you or to you through a set of ideals, then our ideas are fucking, not us, right? Because what happens when I reveal what I really want? Am I now out of alignment with who you are or who I think you to be? Krishnamurti, I always you know, go to this guy. He says, man, if all you are is connected to the social template of what a wife is supposed to be or what a husband is supposed to be, then you've never met her and she's never met you. Because it, all you got to do to get this pussy is bring home the bacon and fix stuff. That's, then the husband gets to say, I get to fuck you in your sleep, right? Because ac- according to the rules of, of marriage, I get to fuck you whenever I want to. You got to have that pussy ready when I want it ready, right? According to marriage. So now we're actually living up to social standards as opposed to really connecting to what, what, we, what we really want. And as we talked about earlier in the conversation, did we not notice that women, the ones we love, we really don't know, right? We really don't know. We're starting to find out that women are more sexual than we once thought they were. Women have deeper, stronger, more powerful desires than we thought. Women probably want relations with other women. I I had a sister tell me once, she said, uh, yeah, I want want my girl to, to suck your dick, but I don't want you to fuck her. Because if you fuck her, she's going to be on it like I'm on it. And I don't want her to be on it like I'm on it. But there's a fantasy of having her blow you off, right? But she can't have it because her having it is what I have. And then I'll get territorial. and, And it's like a real complex dance, man. And what I'm saying is, man, until we have these real, you know, open, honest conversations, all we're doing is fucking ideas. And most people don't understand that. Oh, we're equally yoked because we believe the same thing. Well, you can believe the same thing and still not be compatible, right? I think when you're authentic, that's where compatibility is. We lack compatibility because we're too busy trying to make sure that the ideas line up as opposed to the spirits, the souls, the real shit. To me, that's my final thought. Oh, by the way, everybody got to tell everybody where they're going to be, what they're going to be doing. Ron, I know you got records and movies. and Where can people find you and connect to the legendary Ron Jeremy? Hysterical. Uh, no, actually, to get a hold of me, Mike at Esterman.com, E-S-T-E-R-M-A-N. Mike got, at Esterman.com. Yeah, that's a good hold of me. Also, I got two things I'm excited about. I got a rum that's all over the world right now called Ron D. Jeremy Rum. You should have brought it, it in here, the, the vodka. I know. They have it at the rain, it's, uh, rum. They have it at the Rainbow. They got it at the Green Blatts, you know, next to the Laugh Factory. They have it at uh, uh, Gil Turner's, carries it. So it's um, the one at Sunset and Doheny. So I'm pretty excited. It's all, it's all over the world. It's in uh, different states in America. It's the spiced rum and the dark rum. Also, I got a, a, a vinyl that just came out. It's me playing the harmonica and the piano. You know uh, Waylon Jennings? Uh-huh. His son, Shooter Jennings, has a big record label. He's got uh, Billy Ray Cyrus with one song. He's got a lot of big name people on there, Wanda Jackson, his dad himself. He's got me playing the piano and the harmonica and cracking jokes about classical music. Excellent. It's, under his, under his, uh, it's his album. Excellent. Shooter Jennings album. It comes out, the, the vinyl came out and sold out. Mm-hmm. Amoeba doesn't have any left. So the CD comes out another month or two. Excellent. Corey, where can they find you, bro? Um, you can hear my commentary on this show on Twitter <laughs> at the Corey Holcomb. At the Corey Holcomb. And I want all you guys to know the day you lose control of your bitch, your family is destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Dr. G. Just Google me under Mark Goldston. You'll find a bunch of stuff that, uh, that you won't care about. Well, Dr. G is big time. Just Google me, bitches. Uh, <laughs> Jeff Brown, <laughs> where can we get you, man? Ah, go out to uh, mix, go to mixer.com, m i x e r dot com, and get some ignorant ass ringtones. Ringtone. Say it again. M y x e r dot com slash Jeff Brown ringtones. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Bobby G. Uh, I'm gonna dedicate my other thirty seconds to the memory of the late. El Hodge. Malik. Malik yeah. Shabazz. Malcolm X, happy Came birthday. Came into this world on this day, and his impressions 
are indelible. And because of what he did, I wrote a book called Real Men Don't Play. So check that out. Just go to www.realmendontplay.com. Excellent. Happy birthday, Malcolm. Yeah, excellent. Support Bobby G. We, we really appreciate it. And me, at Mr. Zo What on Twitter. I mean, on Instagram. At Mr. Zo What. On Twitter, at Zo Williams. Follow us. Continue to support us. Blackmastery.com. Ramo Mart. Uh, I am ZoeWilliams.com. Support the movement. This is what we're doing. We're going to come back with another heater topic next week. We're in this we're in this game alone right now. And that's what we're gonna keep doing. We'll be back next week. Holla at you. Deuces. Living with another man's foot in your ass. Turn around like this when you give it up. Bitch, let him move it up. Watch get rich. Spot for the camera, let him take your bitch. African American homegrown nick. So plain and able lie. Hard for the nigga to stay alive. When you get up off your knees instead of begging for somebody to pay your crime. You are watching T-Radio E, radio and TV.